As there are very few model railway shows around these days, I thought that perhaps we all lack a little bit of inspiration. So let's go and have a look at a layout called Culverlands. Hi, welcome back to Chadwick Model Railway. I'm Charlie. And in this video, this is the second of a series in visiting other people's home layouts and recording what they've got, whether it be whatever scale, whether it's DC, DCC, or whatever, industrial or landscape, all these kind of things, so that we can pick up ideas. Obviously, with the current situation, let's say there's not that many model railway shows going on, so I thought I'd get the camera out and go and visit Richard, a good friend of mine who lives locally. This is the second in the series. The first link is up here to the first episode, and that's down at McKinley, which is, um, what should we say, a rather large undertaking. So if you haven't seen that one, please check them out. So let's get over to Richard's layout, which is called Culverlands, and have a look at that. Now here we have the dimensions of Richard's attic and as I said it's called Culverlands and 3.75 metres wide which in old money is 12 foot 4 inches by 4.15 metres which works out at 13.7. So it's a reasonably square room, uh, the lighting, the only natural light comes through this skylight, the rest of it is obviously electrical power. And here are the boards that Richard has built on various levels. And as you can see, there's a, a level, a, a higher board here, then a middle board, and then over here, a lower board. And we'll come back to these diagrams as we work our way through. Here's the track plan. And there's this upper station here, a uh, terminus station, which runs around. And then it goes back down to the main boards, which are, if this is a through station here, more tracks going around the outside. Um, and then goes down into the sort of a fiddle yard area and then you can also uh, scoot past the fiddle yard and come around the outside of the station. There's also a reverse loop and there's also a lower station down here but this is very much um, an in-progress build. And here's the upper station board. So as I mentioned it's a terminus station um, and then disappears from view of this tunnel mouth goes around and then comes back out here into the next board which is just here. So you get this through station here, um, a series of a network of points um, and you can either go around again or you can then start to disappear down. And then the lower level there's reverse loop for this section here and this is the, the sort of the new build. So you would come around here and then back into this small terminus station here. So that's the basics of the layout. And if we go back to the track plan now, and I'll try to show you a few of the trains going around um, and show you these stations before we get underway. Now here's an image of Le Bourne, And as you can see, this is the, uh, the upper level terminus station. And over on the right hand side we have a back scene which if you like hides the fiddle yard and then we have some low relief shops, a main road, some housing and then we get into the station itself which is a three platform terminus station. If you look over to the top left hand side we can see Tillam station which is a through station with four platforms. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and if you hit the little bell icon you'll get a notification of when I release a new video. Right, let's run some trains.
Now, something that Richard Havel has left that I've never seen before are these Pico SL44 expansion joint kits. And as you can see, um, they look pretty nifty. And in reality, I believe that they were called um, a breather switch and they're used on continuous stretches of welded track. Now Richard's adamant that actually during times of hot weather in his attic layout these do absorb the expansion of the track and you can actually see that the track has moved and he's got these both um, across a force stretch on the back wall and also by the window. And in reality of course we can see here at Castle Carey Railway Station the real thing. A nifty little addition and that just that extra piece of detail.
So a little bit more background on the layout. It's a DC controlled layout and Richard uses GageMaster handheld controllers with feedback. There are three of those and the power is from a custom DC power pack. All the track is Pico Code 100 and the points are mainly Electrofrog. The layout set in the 1980s, a post-tops period in BR Blue and as you've seen there are the three station three stations, Lubor, Tillam and an unnamed branch line. With his buildings where he's put his LEDs in, it's quite intriguing really because he's made them with the whole module removable and it draws power from two small pins on the base of the construction and then if we look on the back we can see that those pins go out to copper strips and the copper strips then have resistors to go to the separate LEDs. So if you find that a building the lights too bright or too dim you can simply take down the building, change the resistors and then put it back into place. So fitting it back into place we've turned the lights down and as you can see a little bit of a fiddle and give it a press and hey presto there come the LEDs. And let's be perfectly honest this Marks and Spencer building looks absolutely superb. The figures are quite interesting because he's made them removable because when he can um, dust down the platform. So pulling out the figure you'll find that each figure has uh, a drilled hole, he's drilled a hole in each figure and fitted a small piece of wire. And therefore there's no tacky wax, no glue or whatever so if he wants to move the figures around you can do it quite easily. And the whole feeling about the people at the, at the railway station waiting for trains is quite realistic really and you know it's not just in awful colours or whatever it's just good tasteful modelling. There's a small two road TMD and the buildings are mainly made of card but are all chopped and tweaked accordingly and there's just the one resin building on the layout which is the Backman signal box. The loco sheds from Pico. Of course, as you'd expect with model railways, it's the detail that really matters and Richard has chosen well the right vehicles for the car park. And as we look into this little garden, we can see two gardeners digging away with both the tools and of course a wheelbarrow. And here in their allotment, these two guys working on their plants with the tools next to them and just behind them on a monument, a black cat. And then looking over to the right hand side, we see a lady sat down with a dog yapping at her ankles. And here at Marks and Spencer's there's our window cleaner with his ladder cleaning away and a dustbin, a dog and a cat. Details that really bring that extra little piece to a layout such as this cat on a wall. Kids on the roundabout playing in the wreck. And these two chaps probably doing a house clearance taking away a washing machine, an upright fridge and a sofa. Details that matter.
Well, I hope you found that interesting and my sincere thanks go out to Richard for allowing us into his attic to take a good look at his marvellous model railway. And if you think that you've got a, a railway that I could make a similar video and you live within, say, 25 miles of Shepton Mallet, then please leave a comment and perhaps we can get together and sort something out in, a in the future. Now, people have asked for these videos in the past, but there's no way of me knowing how much you enjoy them unless you leave a comment. So if it's not quite your cup of tea, or in fact, it is something that gives you, let's say, some inspiration to do other stuff to your own layout, again, leave it in the comment section down below. That just about wraps up this one. So I'd like to thank, as usual, the people that donate to the channel by PayPal and, of course, the patrons who, without which none of this would be possible. And if you'd like to support the channel and become a patron, then there's the button. In the meantime, there's also a button there if you're not a subscriber and a video here and here. And I'll see you in two weeks time. Thanks a lot. Take care. Bye bye.